guys. Last time we met, we had gone over the structure of the sarcomere. So if you don't remember that stuff, go back and review lecture number four. If you do, let's look at a couple slices. If we slice a myofibril within the I-band, we are going to see nothing but thin actin filaments. If we slice it in the H zone, we will see nothing but thick myosin filaments. If we slice it at the outer edge of the A-band, that's where we have the overlap, and that is very important for contraction. I see both my thin actin and my thick myosin here. Okay, here is a, that same muscle sarcomere picture we saw earlier. And right now it is relaxed, okay? That is a relaxed picture. Now, what I want you to do is just take a look at the sizes of things here. This is the eye band right here. This eye band, put your, fi put your finger against it or, or something. Like, how big is that? Is it about the size of your thumb or so? Is the, the, the A band... A band, of course, is this next one right here. Let's actually label these guys. Why don't we do that? So this guy right here, this long arrow is the I band. This one is A. This one is I. And this one is H. Measure all of them with your fingers or just eyeball them for me. Okay? Now, I want to point something else out before we go on. If I look at my thick myosin filaments, look at all these little hands it has. Look at all these little hands in each of them. They are going to grab and pull on the thin actins. Let's see what happens when they do that. Okay, now the actin filaments, these blue guys, have been pulled inward. The H zone, look, where's the H zone? The H zone is gone. There is no more region here where we have just myosin. The H zone has disappeared. The I band is tiny. The I band is tiny. The sarcomere distance from Z disc to Z disc has gotten smaller. In contraction, everything gets smaller except for the A band. The A band doesn't change, okay? But the I band gets shorter. The H zone gets shorter. The sarcomere gets shorter. This is called the sliding filament model because you have these two filaments that are basically going over one another. Now here's the thing. Myosins grab onto actin and pull them inward. This makes the A band, sorry, the I band get smaller, makes the H zone get smaller, makes the distance between Z discs get smaller. In other words, the sarcomere gets smaller. Z discs are attached to the sarcolemma. So if the Z discs get pulled inward, the sarcolemma, the membrane, gets pulled inward. That means the whole muscle cell is getting smaller. And of course, this is just one sarcomere. There are going to be, I don't know, maybe millions of sarcomeres in a muscle cell. And they're all going to be doing the same thing. If this guy is contracting, they're all contracting. When sarcomeres contract, Z discs get closer together. Z discs pull on the sarcolemma and the muscle fiber shrinks. The sarcolemma pulls on the endomesium. The endomesium pulls on the paramecium. The paramecium pulls on the epimecium. The epimecium pulls on the tendon, which pulls on bones, and you get movement. Pause that, rewind that, listen to that again, write that whole sequence down. All right. This is how muscle contraction works. We got these thick and thin filaments arranged this way. The thick filaments grab onto the thin and pull them inward. And the sarcomere contracts. All right. Yay. Now, now what we got to do is figure out how an action potential coming down a motor neuron is going to stimulate the muscle cell in such a way that the muscle cell contracts. How does a neuron eventually cause the myosin to grab onto the actin and pull it inward 
making those sarcomeres get shorter. Now this process where we're putting together what's going on with the neuron and what's going on with the muscle fiber is called excitation contraction coupling. So what we see here is our big muscle fiber. There he is right there. Muscle fiber, of course, check out all his nuclei. He's a syncytium. Check out his striations, light, dark, light, dark, etc. Striations are made of I bands. The striations are not made of. They're, uh, the striations are I bands and A bands. We know that if we have I bands and A bands, we have sarcomeres, and sarcomeres contract. And action potential is going to come down this axon, down these telodendria. It's going to release neurotransmitters at the synapse that we have here. At this beautiful synapse, we're going to release neurotransmitters. What are those neurotransmitters? What do they do? And how do they cause the muscle cell to contract? What actually happens at this neuromuscular junction? That's a word from lab that you should have heard already. Okay. Let's look at this stuff. What I got here is my motor neurons axon terminal right here. Filled with vesicles. Here are some little cute vesicles. And the vesicles themselves are filled with these green spherical neurotransmitters. Those guys are acetylcholine. Those guys are known as acetylcholine molecules. You may call acetylcholine ACH for short. I certainly do. So, an action potential is going to arrive at our axon terminal. Bum, bum, bum. Then we have the exocytosis of the acetylcholine. The acetylcholine will drift through the synaptic cleft and bind to nicotinic cholinergic receptors. This purple ion channel right here. That guy is a nicotinic cholinergic receptor. Cholinergic because it is binding to acetylcholine. Nicotinic, because it can also bind to and be activated by nicotine. Throw a nicotine patch on your shoulder for a while and see if your arm muscles get kind of twitchy. Just kidding, don't do that, actually. All right, nicotinic cholinergic receptors. When the acetylcholine binds to them, well, these receptors... Each is an ion channel, and sodium is going to rush in, which means we are going to get a graded potential right here. The graded potential moves. There's a wavy arrow. The graded potential moves, moves to nearby voltage-gated sodium and voltage-gated potassium channels, and we generate an action potential that travels along the entire muscle cell's membrane, the entire muscle's cell's sarcolemma. All right. So acetylcholine, short story here, acetylcholine causes an action potential in the muscle cell. And that action potential speeds along the muscle cell's plasma membrane. All right, very quickly, the acetylcholine is broken down. So it doesn't stimulate the nicotinic cholinergic receptor for too long. It's broken down by an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase, which is found in our motor end plate. Okay. Here we see the action potential graph. I am actually doing, don't, don't hate me for this. Don't, we're, we already did action potential, so we're not worrying about that graph, okay? What we are worried about, though, what we are worried about, though, is, and actually, you know what I want to do? I want to go back, because I, I want to look at a picture again, this one. All right, I'm going to quit now. When we come back, we're going to pick up with this picture here. All right, I'll feed us in.